Hi folks. So the video today is in response to a tutorial that Sergio, aka Tuneman, put on the Moto user forums showing how to create a Dorito setup using Moto 801 and a wrap deformer. Now in this video I'm going to show an alternate method that doesn't require the use of a, a wrap deformer and instead leverages Moto's order of operations system. So there's some advantages in that in terms of speed, as well as the fact that you don't need Moto 801, which has the wrap deformer. You can use Moto 601 or 701 as well. So let's get started. What I've done here is I've loaded from Moto's content library, this scene called Old Man with Morph Maps. So you should be able to find that in your Moto content directory. And if we look at it here under lists, you can see that it already comes with a series of morphs. So for example, angry, happy, Spock, etc. Now I think we're just gonna, for the purpose of this demonstration, we're just gonna work with one of the morphs, although you could set up and the system would still work blending with multiple morphs. So let's go back into setup. This skin is what it, it comes in for the main mesh. We're gonna rename that and call it old man. And now I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it. And we'll call this one Old Man Reader. So the first thing we're going to do is hide the old man mesh. Now, this old man mesh is going to be the one that the animator is going to see and work with. But for now, we can hide it. And we're going to start by working with the old man reader. Now, all this is going to be used for is to tell us what a vertex position is uh, when this mesh is being morphed. Now, that may be a blend of morphs. For example, it could be a mixture of happy and, and angry or angry and quizzical or whatever. Um, but however the morphs are affecting this mesh, we want to know where a, a vertex is positioned uh, in space. So to do that, let's go ahead and create a locator. And I'm going to rename this one as locator mouth corner reader. I'm going to come into its display and we'll make it smaller, pretty small. Yeah, something like that. That's fine. Now for this mesh, I'm going to come into vert vertex mode and sort of following along with what uh, Sergio did in his video tutorial. So we're just gonna select this vertex on the corner. If I come into lists, I can see under the statistics uh, info for this selected vertex, its number is 1177. So we'll keep note of that. Now I'm gonna select the, I'm in setup tab here at the top. Under modifiers on the side, I'm going to select the uh, mouth corner reader locator. And we're also going to select the mesh. And I'm going to say, uh, I want to constrain to a vertex position. So we'll go ahead and activate that. Now we've got a little plus sign next to our uh, mouth corner reader locator. So we can open that up and it gives us the vertex position constraint. If I come into the properties, it's, it's way over here. So it's not constrained to the right uh, vertex, but we remember that it, the number of the vertex we want is 1177. So now there it is, it's in the correct position. Actually, I'm going to make that locator even a little bit smaller. Still a little bit big. Doesn't really matter, but anyway, there we go. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to select the old man reader uh, mesh item. I'm going to come into lists. I'm going to select the morph I want, which is the happy morph, right click on it and say add a morph influence. I'm going to rename this to morph influence happy reader. Okay, and I can just hide it because I don't need to see the locator. I find it distracting the locators for the associated with the morphs. Um, and we can go in under properties, set this to a strength of zero for now. Now as a little helper here, what I'm going to do is add another item, another locator. We'll rename this one as face morph 
controls. Okay. And from the front, I'm going to go into setup mode. And um, from the front, I'm going to change this display. Go to locator shapes. I'll change the shape to something custom. So we'll do a replace circle solids good yeah I want it to align to the view we'll make it something like 30 millimeters in diameter that's yeah even less 20 mi 20 millimeter 20 mil say <clears throat> and we'll move it down somewhere beside the head that's convenient then under the properties I'll just zero that out so we can always get it back into the correct position. And now under user channels, we're gonna add a user channel. I'll call this happy. I want it to be a percentage and with a minimum value of zero, a maximum value of 100. I like the slider controls for percentages, so that'll be good. Now going under channels, I can select happy and drag it out into our schematic. And now we can go over here to our morph influence and drag it into the schematic. Now we just have to wire it up from happy to, whoops, actually I need the strength for this. Drag from the strength in there, there we go. Go from happy to the strength of the morph influence. Lastly, we'll select the face morph control uh, locator. And under assembly, I'll, for its command, I'll set it to channel hall. That means every time we select this, it'll automatically pop up the channel hall controls. And there we go. We now have a nice slider to uh, activate our morph. And you could add additional user channels for the other morph expressions and then blend them uh, right from here as well. Okay, now the important thing to note here is that if we zoom in, you'll see that indeed our locator mouth corner reader is going along, it's being point constrained to the vertex we selected, and it's going along as we do the morph. So great, that's what we wanted to accomplish. So the next phase is let's go ahead and start working on the controls that the animator will actually work with. So we'll add a new locator. I'm gonna rename this as locator uh, mouth corner control. Okay, let's change its display. We'll change its shape to replace the normal locator shape. Uh, I'd like this one to be a sphere and I don't want it solid. And we're going to make it pretty small, like four millimeters. Okay, now I want this to be in the same position as our reader mouth corner reader locator. So just to make this easier to drag and drop, I'm gonna hide the mesh for a second. Come into drop action, select match position, and drag this and drop it on the other. So there we go. So now match the, the position. And as we do the morph, that moves, but we want this to move and follow the reader's position. So to do that, all we have to do is take the face morph uh, actually the locator mouth corner control that we just created, the little sphere guy, and we'll drag him and drop him. So it's now a child of the mouth corner reader. And as we morph, there they go. It's going along for the ride. Okay, that's great. Now the next thing we wanna do is we're, we can keep the uh, old man reader mesh hidden. We're not gonna need to, to see that now. Let's show our old man uh, mesh here. While we're here, we'll come into the lists with the happy uh, morph. We'll right click on it, say add a morph influence. We can rename this morph influence as just happy. Okay, again, I'm gonna hide the, uh, I don't need to see that, that locator for the morph, so I'll just hide it. I'm gonna tidy up a bit here. I'm gonna just take this morph control, put it up higher. Uh, we'll leave the two morph influences down here at the bottom. Okay, that's, that's all well and good. 
Uh, and for the morph influence happy, I'll just come into its properties. For now, we'll just zero the strength of it. So we don't need to see that. Okay, so selecting the old man mesh, I'm gonna come into uh, vertex mode and I'm going to select, right click and drag to just bounding select a bunch of vertices around the corner of the mouth. And now what we're gonna do is say uh, for deform under the deformers here, we're gonna create a weight container. Now, if I change to a vertex map shading, we can see it's, it's given 100% weighting to all those points that are in the weight container. Let's just come down here to weighting, adjust weights, uh, take the weight of those down, and then we'll do a bit of paint, weight painting. Okay, so we'll just paint a little bit of weight around the, around the corner of the mouth there, smooth it out. No. Good enough. Now, okay, good enough. So I'll go back to Gooch. And the last thing that we're gonna wanna do is um, create a, under deformers, a new deformer of general influence. So let's start rigging this stuff up. We'll take the weight container, drag it down into the schematic, uh, take our locator mouth corner control, the, the one that's the child of the reader, bring it down here. Go over to the deformers tab. We've got the general influence we created. I'm gonna rename this as general influence, general influence mouth corner. That's better. All right, so we just rig from the locator mouth corner control to the effector, the weight for the geometry. Uh, I like to explicitly set it to weight map and weight container. So there we go. Um, now, because we're gonna be using Moto's order of operation system, how things appear in the deformer list matters. So Moto evaluates from the bottom to the top for deformer. So we're gonna take this deformer and we're gonna drag it to the bottom. And that means this deformation is going to fire first and then the morph will add uh, further influence. So going back to our item list, now let's just come down to our, our morph influence happy. And for its channels, we'll take the strength, we'll drag it in there. So remember, this is the morph influence now for the mesh that the animator will actually see. And we'll rig it from our controls to the strength. Now let's see what we've got. So if I click on the morph controls, aha, now, as the morph is happening, our uh, mouth corner control is going along for the ride and it's also adding its deformation to the deformation of the morph. And as you can see, what we're getting here, it doesn't look right, is a double transform, the dreaded double transform. So how can we fix this? Very easy. We come into the locator mouth corner control go to its properties, and we don't want the deformation mode to be world. Instead, we want it to be local. And this means that its uh, deformation will be evaluated from its rest position. So now, if we go ahead and select it, we can see, yep, now the morph looks correct. And in addition to that, we can grab this little uh, sphere and tweak from there the extra deformation that we may want to add to that. So just to make things a little bit easier, because I, I might actually um, be selecting the, the, the wrong things here. So the first thing I'm going to do to make it easier for an animator is I would select the old man item mesh and under uh, assembly, uh, I will just set it to select new. So now you can't select that by accident. And the other thing here is we don't need to see this locator mouth corner reader. That's, it's done its job. All it's doing is it's giving our mouth corner control 
uh, a, a position information so that it can follow along with the morph and then we can keep things moving from there. So we don't need to see this anymore. So I can come into display and say visible, no, but its child is still visible. So now we have a nice little, uh, little setup. Let's work with it. So we can, we can morph and now we can uh, grab that and tweak. Bring it down, grab that and tweak it however we want. And of course, as we morph, it's gonna move from wherever we've tweaked, tweaked onward. Okay, so there we go. That is pretty much it. And that's a way of working using order of operation instead of the wrap deformer. Now, I guess just in conclusion, the question might be, why do we have to have this second head that's hidden? Uh, why are we doing things that way? Why can't we just use a single, a single mesh? Well, the main problem is that you would create a dependency loop. So just to illustrate this, um, I'll try to explain it. So what we would be saying, what would happen in a dependency loop is you would be saying, as you try to tweak this guy and move him, his position is being in part determined by the position of the vertex. So if you were moving him though, and it was all in one mesh, then moving the tweak would affect the position of the vertex, which in turn would try to affect the position of the control. And the position of the control would then try to affect the vertex and the vertex, the control, and blah, we go in a crazy circle of dependency loop and it breaks and doesn't work. So uh, Moto will not allow you to create dependency loops. So what we've effectively done here is this face that's in the background is morphing, but it's not being influenced at all uh, by what we're doing with the, the, the tweaking using this control. So order of operation is taking care of the fact that it's fine that we can combine both a morph and uh, an extra transform of some weighted geometry. And that's cool, we can handle that with the order of operations of Moto's deformer stack. But what we can't do is we can't have that also be affecting the position of the vertex from which we are reading the position data or else we get that dependency loop. So by having this face, this old man reader in the background, all it's doing is just the one morph, then that allows us to get the position without causing the dependency loop. So there you go, uh, an alternate method of doing a Dorito setup in Moto, and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.